Welcome to WATC's Atlanta Live. This is the station that you can get the most non-news programming in all of Atlanta. I'm Courtney Curtis. And I'm Marcus Graham. And we're so honored and grateful that the Lord has brought you here yes. tonight. And if you know someone who's missing the show but needs to see it, uh, you know, we'll re-air this program tomorrow at 7 and on our second channel, WATC2 at 2 p.m. That's right. We're coming to you live from our studio in Norcross, Georgia, but we stream all over the world. So you can catch us right now on our website, www.watc.tv. You can also catch us on Facebook and on YouTube, as well as Google Play, the Apple TV, Roku, Truly, and our very own WATC TV app, which you can download from the App Store right now. It is completely free. That's the best part. It's a beautiful thing. Yes. Uh, tonight, we are about to hear testimonies from people whose lives have been transformed by the love of Jesus. Yes. And hear music from an artist whose singing and piano playing will revive your soul. Yes, but before we get to that, we want to take a moment to pause and reflect because today, Tuesday, mm -hmm. September 11th, on this day, 17 years ago, almost 3,000 people lost their lives in the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. On that day, our first priorities as a nation were to unify and to save as many lives as possible, and that could not have been done without the first responders who paid the ultimate sacrifice, who, as it says in John 15, showed the greatest form of love by laying down their lives for a friend, or in this case, a complete stranger. So we also, though, lift up those who are still dealing with the pains of losing a loved one from that day. I pray in Jesus' name that your hearts receive restoration, they receive peace and comfort, and the fullness of joy that only Jesus Christ can fill you with. A lot has changed since those terrorist attacks, but one thing that has not changed and will not change until the coming back of the Lord is our desperate need of a savior and that savior being Jesus Christ. Yes. And with that being said, if you're needing prayer right now or throughout the yes. program, or you want to know what it means to have uh, Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior, I want you to call a number. Uh, it's on the screen, 770-300-9828. Again, 770-300-9828. And we have our prayer partners here ready to take your call. And, you know, with us talking about what it looks like to mm -hmm. endure hardship, you have to listen to this next song. It talks about the hope that Jesus brings in times of our hopelessness. Mm -hmm. Heather Tag, our music guest this evening, is on standby at the music set, and she is singing Unshackled. Set free and always living 
up and shackle my head cut me sir from this world i'm leaving behind these prison doors hands up and shackle my head cut me sir from this world Oh my goodness, that was powerful. I was not expecting that type of voice. Very nice. And I love that message, just being freed from our shackles. I feel like that is something that we all can gravitate towards, no matter yeah. where we are in our lives. That reminder is sweet. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. That's good. Hey, we've got, guests. we have two guests and they are unique people in the sense that they are business people and they are very comfortable talking in the marketplace about their relationship with Jesus Christ. And so here, uh, first we have Heinz Wegener, and he is uh, founder, founder and CEO of um, Cross Technologies. And then here we have uh, Susan O'Dwyer, who works with a uh, company, a professional services company called Aprio. So welcome to both of you. Thank you for having me. You know, it takes such boldness for us to be able to proclaim Jesus in our workplaces. And you guys, I can't wait to get into this because the testimonies that you have are so inspiring for us who are all in the workplace, who all need to be reminded what it's like to stand up and be bold for Jesus. But something that got me interested in your story Heinz is that you started your business. It's a multi-million dollar business and you started it in your laundry room back in what, 1978? Yes. I, How did this happen? Well, I was uh, an engineer. I, I grew up in Germany. Uh, I was born in Germany. My parents came over in 1951 and uh, I worked hard and uh, did well in school and mm -hmm. became an electrical engineer, married the girl of my dreams, uh -huh. Anna Lee, in, mm -hmm. <laughs> after my freshman year in college. And uh, so I got a, a job in, um, in engineering, uh, first at General Electric in Utica, New York, and then Scientific Atlanta uh, here. And that was a great career, but uh, uh, transitioned into working at Georgia Tech for a couple mm -hmm. years. And while I was working there, I did some con consulting work that led to uh, a product which ended up um, starting a company called Wegener Communications, which uh, uh, a guy named Bob Plasek an amazing guy from Scientific Atlanta joined me and it ended up becoming uh, 177th on the Inc. 500. Wow. And um, then I became a born again believer and we'll share Amen. that a little bit and yeah. wanted to integrate my faith in the marketplace and my partner Bob uh, allowed me to spin off Cross Technologies uh, 24 years ago. So, mm. uh, but uh, Wegener actually started the first product in, in my laundry room as, oh. as I show in my little testimony here that uh, we saw the pictures yeah. and that's I mean yeah. that is humbling humble beginnings but you've made an empire by that that's amazing an empire for Jesus now amen and that's yeah. amazing yep. incredible 
And Susan, tell us a little bit about your world in business and, uh, and what you do. So I work for Aprio, which is Georgia's largest independent accounting and professional services firm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's about a 65-year-old company, mm. and I am their civic and community relations director. Mm -hmm. And so for you, something that I noticed in your testimony for quite some time, for decades of your life, you weren't able to really talk about your faith, not only in the workplace, but just in general. You were trained as though you couldn't really share. Well, I, I was born on a Friday, and Sunday <laughs> I was in the choir loft with my parents, <laughs> but I never, underst I never heard in church, and we were there every time the doors opened that w a, what a workplace ministry was. Yes. I, I just wasn't familiar with that at all. And so it was just kind of a stiff upper lip and you mm -hmm. just, you know, behave the right way, but you don't really ever talk about your faith. And then I came to work at Aprio, and, uh, which is a firm that has very, very deep roots in the Jewish community. Mm -hmm. And I really began to understand the roots of Jesus because Amen. the people that I worked with were so kind and sharing their faith, because if I'm really going to understand who Jesus is, I really need to understand the Jewishness of Jesus. Yes. So um, it's a place where, because it's so intertwined in their lives, that uh, faith comes up every day. And I just tell them that each one of them, each one of the partners I work with can be my second favorite rabbi, but Jesus is my first. Amen. <laughs> I love that. And you have a heart for Israel. That's something that you're passionate about bringing to other Christians who maybe are kind of indifferent about how they feel about it. Why do you have a tug to the Jewish people in Israel? Um, I guess it starts with Genesis 12:3, where God tells Abraham that I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And when God is handing out the blessings, I do not want to be hard to find. I hear that. And so um, <laughs> since that. they are, the, the Jews are his chosen people, I choose to stand with, mm -hmm. uh, with them. But I didn't really feel it so much until um, the people that I work with arranged for me to go on a trip to Israel. Mm -hmm. And it totally changed my life. You know, it's such a time mm -hmm. as this right now, right? Oh, to be yeah. standing alongside of Israel, yeah. that boldness. I mean, you truly have to be bold in that, and so I appreciate that. Yeah, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of support for Israel, and there's a lot of misunderstanding yes. Yes. about Israel. Yes. Um, and and the historical ties that the Jews have to Israel, not because they chose it, but because God gave it to them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. And we're members of the. Uh, Israel American Chamber of Commerce with our, our business is international. Fantastic. And I've gotten to know them, uh, the, the leadership there, and they're very anxious to build relationships with Christians and Christian business people. And uh, their organization is uh, called Connects, and they do all kinds of uh, uh, missions to Israel, I guess you would say. Mm. So, with your business, Heinz, tell us what you do in a way that the people in uh, in TV land would be able to understand because it's pretty technical, right? Yeah, it's, uh, well, in every uh, satellite um, facility, there's a, a need to translate the frequencies um, from the many different frequencies that are mm. transmitted to the decoders. And mm -hmm. we build the, the hardware uh, that um, uh, does that translation. And it's kind of a niche market. It's uh, it's uh, hardware versus uh, the software, and we uh, we literally have the, the who's who and the satellite industry as our customers. And again, I've been in that industry since '72. That's a long time ago. Well, I also understand that you have a really neat uh, job benefit working at your company, regarding <laughs> how much you have to work. Yes, and you know, I uh, I'm a real believer that um, as we operate in the Holy Spirit and in the power of God. There should be a real um, uh, differentiation between believers. And so uh, about 16, 17 years ago, I prayed about how we would at Cross Technologies do that. And the Lord put on my heart the idea of a four-day, 32-hour work week. Now, I always caution mm. people, this is not a formula. Don't go back and ask your boss for a <laughs> four-day, 32-hour work week. But for me, it was a key part of my witness for the Lord, mm -hmm. wow. and we've done that for 16 years now, um, and I've tried to be very legalistic about that, so it's not 32 hours except for when we have to solve some problem, and then it's 70 hours. It's 32 hours pretty, pretty regularly, and if you go by our company um, on a Friday, the parking mm -hmm. lot's empty, and uh, 
That's, uh, and, and the efficiency that we have is stunning. Hmm. It's just God is just involved and the people that are, that are working on things just do things that are beyond my comprehension. Well, that's cool. Now, Susan, tell us what your day is like at work. What do you do day in and day out? Well, unlike Kainz, we don't have a 32-hour <laughs> <laughs> especially Like most tax, Americans. Yeah, especially around right. tax deadlines. <laughs> but um, my job is to help um, place our partners who are focused on uh, companies' audits and doing their corporate and individual tax returns um, to place our partners in a strategic community service positions because Jewish faith uh, teaches um, a phrase called tikkun alum, which means mm -hmm. repair the world. Mm -hmm. And so giving back to the community is integral to who they are as a faith. And as a Christian, of course, I can totally relate to that. We're looking for ways to make the world a better place, mm -hmm. and my job is to help identify where those, uh, where we would be best suited, and where we can work. That's and awesome. You can't have a you know 400 people show up at a nonprofit, so it's parsing those opportunities out yeah. and connecting with the right decision makers mm. in the business world. That's incredible. Hmm. And Heinz, I want to bring it back to your testimony because you started out and you're this business mogul. You just created this empire and then your heart started turning for the Lord. And now you're doing something that you, you're marrying both of them. And I think that's beautiful between business and Jesus. And you're yes. making something so that other people who are business like minded can join in. T talk to us a little bit about that walk and that journey for yeah, you. Yeah, And I, I believe uh, that that was a key part of my faith journey was mm. achieving my goals at a young age. I was 33 years old and I started a company that had my name on it that was starting to grow by leaps and bounds thanks mm. in large part to my partner Bob Plasick uh, who was really the, uh, the uh, brilliant mind behind the company growing and yet I was empty and miserable mm. and you know we, we talk a lot about uh, the what the Lord can give us and I believe that means material things but he gives us soul rest. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there is nothing that will satisfy a soul apart from Jesus. Amen. And a friend invited me to a Bible study, um, uh, and uh, I reluctantly went with him. And when I walked into the room, I felt like I like the presence of Jesus was there. Almost began to cry, and through that process, accepted Jesus as Lord mm -hmm. and Savior. And then. Still wrestled with the alcohol for three and a half years. A friend invited me to a full gospel businessman's breakfast where I uh, was miraculously delivered of alcohol, received the baptism mm. of the Holy Spirit, and really have been passionate to move in the things of the Holy Spirit uh, in work as well as in my uh, faith in other areas. That's incredible. And I'm curious, I know you are too, Marcus, mm. when we hear about the Norcross Fellowship Luncheon, this is something that got started and now a lot of people yes. are gravitating toward it. What is it? How can people get plugged in? Tell us all about it. Well, a, a businessman's testimony was key in my um, uh, coming to know the Lord and also being delivered of alcohol. And I learn when I hear a testimony because it's not someone pointing their finger at me. It's them sharing their own experience and the Lord will, will connect me with things that I need to maybe consider as a person shares their testimony. So uh, after my experience at the Full Gospel Businessman's Breakfast, uh, I met with uh, Larry Schrader, who's uh, in real estate. His uh, father-in-law headed up the Full Gospel uh, chapter, Linwood Maddox, and we started the Norcross Fellowship Luncheon mm -hmm. at, the, um, at a restaurant in downtown Norcross uh, 33 years ago. Wow. And uh, we've been meeting every mm. week since then. Our main speakers mm. are businessmen who profess Christ who are not in full-time ministry and currently employed. And so we, we really want to he hear from uh, businessmen who, who are in the marketplace mm -hmm. and how do they apply their faith. We meet every week uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, an amazing... 33 years. 33 years. Wow. Every week. Every week. Oh my that gosh. is dedication. Yeah. So, uh, Susan, tell us a little bit about how you came to know Christ. So, I was, uh, as I said, grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't have a date when I can tell you that I became a Christian because I just always believed. Mm -hmm. But when I was 50, um, the Lord told me it was time to change jobs. 
and I had no idea where that meant I could mm -hmm. go because the job that I did, there was the only person in a company of 150,000 people who did what I did. I was the National Director of Venture Capital Research, mm -hmm. which um, meant it was kind of hard to find something else <laughs> to do. Right. And, not uh, many of those jobs around. Not, right. not yeah. many. So um, uh, through a number of circumstances, um, I was introduced to Haber Fergetti and Wynn, which is the former name of my company now, Aprio. And um, you don't work at a place for 20 plus years without some people who are your advocates and they mm -hmm. called and, and placed me. But I was very, very ill um, the summer of 2007, mm -hmm. for more in St. Joe's than out. And um, it's not something that you'd ever see on an explanation of benefits, mm -hmm. but I had um, what I called dissonance. Um, and the dissonance was my values that I learned through the church. Uh, and my parents were just not what I was seeing in my former employer. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I came to h and w I was n not particularly healthy, um, but it was a great healing to me to come to a place where people were so open mm -hmm. uh, to share their faith and interested in the experience that I had working at um, a much larger firm so that I could help them grow their company, and when I started at Aprio, I think we weren't there weren't even 125 people there, and today it's over 400. It's wow. not cause and effect um, of my <laughs> being there, but um, but really been able to contribute and um, see a big difference in the growth of the company. Wow, so it's been exciting. Congratulations on that. I want to make sure we have enough information when it comes to the um, Norcross Fellowship Luncheon. Yes. So for people that are watching right now who are saying, okay, I want to come. You said it's once a week. What are the exact details? How can they plug in? Where should they go to get that content? Excellent. We meet every Wednesday, uh, 12 to 1, at the Golden Corral on Satellite Boulevard. Okay. The website is nfl-luncheon.com, and that will give you all the directions. There's a list of speakers by last name, and the list is just stunning. The, the People Jesus has brought to the luncheon are just amazing, all mm. the way from you know Truett Cathy and oh wow, uh, uh, Chick-fil-A uh, founder, yeah, yes. to uh, uh, many many different uh, businessmen of all different backgrounds, and uh, it's always sometimes it, we we serve as a platform for a businessman to share it for the first time in a public setting like that, and so uh, there there are often uh, times that uh, that that's you know, also part of the benefit of the luncheon is for those that share, mm -hmm. uh, they can get that. Uh, and I believe, you know, that as we testify, as we declare Jesus as Lord and Savior and honor him, there is a benefit from that that uh, we can't really necessarily uh, measure, but it's, mm. uh, it's, it's, an, it's, it's an important thing to to share your testimony. Absolutely. Did you ever have business women come? Yeah, we did for a while, okay. and because of the ah, personal good question. nature of the testimonies, uh, we felt for us that it was important for the main speakers to be businessmen. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, we do have open mic once a month, and we welcome, and women are welcome to attend. Okay. Uh, my wife attends quite often, and and uh, and on open mic, anybody can share whether you're in full time. A business or you know whatever your background is so that's also an, an interesting time well I think it's really exciting to see what you guys are doing uh, yes. in the marketplace and you know taking God with you mm. into lots of relationships that uh, so often God is not allowed mm. and, and it's and I think there's a thirst out there where mm. people want to talk about this yeah. this type of thing on a regular basis and I think for you to be out in the marketplace that's very helpful and High Tech Ministries, is, uh, as Susan mm. is very involved in, and I and I, our company is too, is another. It it uh, its annual prayer breakfast is the largest high tech event in the um, in the Atlanta area. Oh, mm. that's great! Sixteen hundred people. Oh my wow. gosh! Um, my goodness! Well, well, time's about up. We certainly both have been treasures. Really been great Thanks. to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you so much for sharing your stories. That was really Thank awesome. Thank you for having us. Really. Awesome. All right. Well, you guys, you heard her earlier in the show, and she's performing for you once again. She's a singer. She is a songwriter. She is a worship pastor. And right now, she's going to be performing one of her songs off her single called Out of Hiding.
No need to cover what I already see You've got your reasons but I hold your peace You've been on lockdown and I hold the key Cause I love My goodness, Heather Tag, thank you so much for Very that. Nice. Out of Hiding, that was her song off of her latest single. She's a worship minister and pastor in this area. And mm -hmm. my goodness, I mean, talking about an anointing and a message for people at a time like this, it was just, it was great. Awesome. Yeah. Now we have new guests. We do. First Welcome. we, this is uh, James Eli. Eli. Eli, I'm sorry, I thought I was gonna get that right. Okay. And then Bob Elsasser. Perfect. Welcome. Yeah. We are so glad you guys are here. And these, these gentlemen are with uh, um, an organization called Men's, Georgia Men's Advance. Yes. And there's a few organizations that function underneath that umbrella, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. You guys stay pretty busy. Uh -huh. You guys have a lot going on <laughs> in your ministry. <laughs> so, uh, so tell us uh, a little bit about it. Well, the Georgia Men's Advance is mm -hmm. uh, kind of an outshoot of uh, the Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship. Right. Uh, it's one of four ministries that are all wrapped around the full gospel. Mm. It, uh, we do this advance once a year, and what we do is we try to bring in fellows from all over the state, and other states as well, mm -hmm. and really get down with Jesus. It's a Holy Ghost thing, mm. and it's really wonderful. The other things that we do is we have luncheons 
kind of like what the other fellow was talking about. We have mm -hmm. one in, in coming on the first Thursday of every month and another one in Atlanta uh, in Roswell. And that's on the second and, and fourth uh, Fridays of the month. And then... So that's every month? Every month. Okay. Every month. Okay. Two every month. And then the other things that we do is we have a prison ministry. Which Powerful. is run by a, a Mr. with Tom. And, and he, he's an amazing guy. Mm -hmm. he, he's... Well, he was a prisoner himself. He was locked up for murder. Oh, wow. And he got the out. Life he sentence, got, correct? He was supposed to have a life sentence. sentence and he, and, and uh, he was uh, saved amen. there. And, and, uh, in the prison. In the prison. Mm -hmm. And he's come out now. And he, he's pretty much dedicated his entire life wow. to working with the prisoners, leading them to the Lord, mm -hmm. getting them educated, and getting them full of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So when they get out, you know, they'll have a ministry too. And then the last thing that we do is kind of what I'm involved in mostly, and that's called the Godmobile Ministry. And what we do is we go to the children in the festivals, and we talk to the kids about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they're all there for popcorn and rides and everything, but we've got a two-question test for them to take. And the questions go you like this. You guys have that here, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it a long question? No, no, it's two questions. Two questions? Actually, are you going to go to heaven when you die? Okay. And little kids come up and they're fascinated by that. Mm. And then you ask them, why do you believe that? And they really want to know. They really want to know. And so we get a chance to explain to them what Jesus did to help them and what he's going to continue to do throughout their lives as a very good friend for them. Yes. And kids love that. Yes. I mean, it's amazing. So, and so it just got me hooked, and I've been doing this for, I don't know, about seven years now. Mm. Well, I was going to ask, how long has this organization uh, been in existence, and has it uh, evolved well, over time? The gospel itself has been in existence since 1952. It was started by Demis Shakarian, mm. and uh, it, it spread out all over the world. And uh, this is a, uh, the group here from Georgia, just one of the largest groups in existence in the United States. Mm. Uh, it's a wonderful ministry. Mm -hmm. We're taking it to the streets. I, I can see that. And you, if you go on your website, you can see that too. Just all of the opportunities that we as, you know, volunteers that want to volunteer for Christ, if we want to plug in, you have plenty of ways in order for us mm -hmm. to do that. I'm so excited to be here because it's yes. just kicking off the season for us. Awesome. Uh, this weekend is the advance. Yes. It's going to be at Rock Eagle. Uh, there's probably going to be 500 spirit-filled men there. And if you want to get a shot of the Holy Spirit, show up. Mm -hmm. you know? And those dates, September 14th through the 16th? That's, that's correct. That's that correct? correct? And are there still spots? There's still spots. Oh, yeah. For Just show up. Come. Yeah, show yeah. up. If you don't have money, show up anyways. We'll let you in. That's amazing. You know? Now, where's Rock Eagle? Is that out? It, it's out in Madison. It's the 4-H okay. Club. Okay. Georgia's 4-H Club. Mm -hmm. Madison. It's a wonderful retreat that the 4-H runs and. uh it's going to be wonderful. So, but that's a one retreat. Do you have other retreats throughout the year? Let me, let me say yes, something here. Mm -hmm. It's not a retreat. It's an advance. An advance. Oh, There's a reason okay. why you guys yeah, call yeah, it yeah. this. This is yeah. interesting. Tell advance. us why. We're not supposed to advance. We're not supposed to retreat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Yes. I didn't pick up on that. Strategic. So sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. That's all right. We're here to learn. We're here to learn more about that. And then the other thing that's going on is we're kicking off the season for the Godmobile. And I'm just really happy to be here to tell everybody mm -hmm. that starting this Thursday, this Thursday, this Thursday okay. the 13th to the 23rd, we're going to be in Gwinnett County, and we're going to have the tent set up, and we're, we're going to be talking to the kids. And anybody that's interested in becoming a volunteer is welcome to come and join us. Uh, it, so this sounds like a vehicle? It's a vehicle, all right. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. The Godmobile. Yeah, the Godmobile, and yeah. you know who's driving. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And you can find pictures of that on your website as well. Yes, we have YouTube there that can really show you the whole story. Yes. But then after that, okay, the 20th through the 30th, we're going to meet the North Georgia State Fair right there on the Midway. Wow. And it's amazing the stories that have come out of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had a gang war there that, that was supposed to happen. The chaplain for the, the, the uh, Cobb County police came by and told us, hey, guys, keep an eye out. And you know, there might be a gang war here tonight. Mm -hmm. And the head of the gang came to the Godmobile to razz us. And during the whole thing, we found out that the reason he was so angry was that his brother died at a young age, and he was holding it against the Lord. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. 
we told him where his brother was. Mm -hmm. And we told him that if you would take a certain step, you could be with your brother in eternity. He came to the Lord. Oh my goodness. There was no gang war, and he started bringing the rest of the gang members one by one back. You get the leader, mm -hmm. and the rest of them come along. Mm -hmm. It was a miracle. It's amazing. And talk about one being impactful enough for the kingdom of God. You know, it takes one person to be able to bring, yes, to spread mm -hmm. and to bring others along on that mission that's to glorify and to spread the gospel. I love that. I think that's powerful. And then after that, and then I'll, and I'll be quiet. No. The, the, uh, we'll be in Perry for the Georgia State Fair. And that's the largest fair in, I think, the, in the country now. It's over 600,000 people attend. Wow. And uh, that'll be from the 5th of October through the 15th, and simultaneously we'll be in coming at the coming fairground from the 5th to the 15th. So if anybody's in either one of those vicinities and wants to get involved, we got a place for you. Mm, that's He's fantastic. got a place for you. So for people that want to volunteer specifically for all of these ministries, any of these ministries, one of these ministries, where do they go in order to get plugged in? Well, go to the Georgia Men's Advance. Georgia Men's Advance. A advance. Yeah. Not retreat. Advance. Yeah. Advance.com. At dot com. Great. And they'll give you all the instructions. My phone number's there and all the other people that are involved. So I see Georgia, the Men's Advance, GA? GA, yeah. Georgia. Okay. If you don't put that on there, you've got another state. Okay, so men's it's the advance. Men's Advance, GA, GA dot com. Dot com. Um, correct. Awesome. And a little bit about, I mean, I know, Marcus, you and I were speaking about this beforehand. In order for you to be doing what you're doing, the Lord had to place this on your heart, right? This isn't something that you do to glorify self. It takes a very sacrificial life. So what was it that pressed in your hearts in order for you to say, I'm going to do kingdom work and I'm going to sacrifice everything in order to do it? I'm just going to, I'll, I'll just going to say something real quick. Now. You're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I used to be real sick and introverted. And I went to, uh, well, basically, the doctor said I was going to be dead. Mm -hmm. I'll be 84 in November. Mm -hmm. wow. But the Lord uh, saved me back when I was a teenager. But I didn't become a deep Christian or anything until later. And um, this, this meeting <laughs> that he's talking about was a start of me getting closer to God. Mm -hmm. I was uh, visited a meeting, and uh, they asked me to go to the Godmobile. And uh, I said, I can't do that. I'm too introverted. And the Holy Spirit just kept week after week after week until I finally went. Mm, that's what he did. And uh, I s stood out there and basically for a couple, couple of meetings and everything. And then the Holy Spirit just moved in. Mm -hmm. He's been... I started off as an usher, and then he's been gradually moving me up. Fantastic. It's amazing what happens. <laughs> I, I, one of the things I think I find that's the most interesting in all of this is people get saved, and, and they, they're kind of worldly Christians. Mm -hmm. But when you start getting plugged in to what God's telling you to do, mm -hmm. all of a sudden the Holy Ghost shows up, and changes the whole atmosphere. Yes. And I've seen this happen over and over and over. Mm -hmm. You go to these fairs and people like my friend Jim shows up with all these afflictions. And the Holy Ghost shows up and takes them away. And then all of a sudden he's talking just like anybody else leading young people to the Lord. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I mean, in my life, and you were asking about that, I had a hard time also confronting people with the joy that I had found. I, I didn't want to get in their face, you know. But with this Godmobile ministry, it's amazing because you have a sign up there and people come to you, mm -hmm. right? Right. I mean, it's not like you're in their face. They're coming to you and asking you, well, what's this test all about? Right. And it opens up a whole area of your life where you're able to really express the love that Jesus has in your life and pass it on to somebody else. And I tell you, after some of these things, I get a glow on. I walk through the grocery stores, and I'm just filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And people see that in you. And it they want contagious. it, too. You know? 
So that's, that's it and about the calling. The Lord shook me one night, woke me up. Mm -hmm. He told me that, Bob, I want you to go after those children. Mm -hmm. I love the children, and I want you to talk to them about me before they get too far out into the world. Mm -hmm. Because that's what happened to me. You know, I got way out in the world. Mm -hmm. And God was patient with me for a while, but at 33 years old, he said, enough. Mm -hmm. And the craziest thing happened, I was a businessman selling industrial equipment to churches and banks and schools. And I got to this one church, the big church in New Haven, Connecticut on the Trinity Episcopal Church. And the caretaker there may have been the only one saved in the whole place. And he saw me and he saw something in me and the Holy Spirit guided him and he said, Bob, I'll let you have this security system, the whole deal, big deal and all this other thing, but I want you to come with me for a weekend and talk with the pastor and I about the whole thing. It was men's curseo number three. <laughs> oh, wow. And it just shook my world. As I realized at that point that there was no amount of drugs, there was no amount of alcohol, there was no amount of things in this world that could ever get me happy. <laughs> but there was somebody that died for me yeah. and he was gonna be with me to the end. And during that, that whole thing, as we were installing the system in the, in the attic of that church, the Lord came to me and he said, Bob, I want you to go to Atlanta and I want you to get involved. I came down here and the Holy Ghost was flying. I got involved with the full gospel businessmen, a Mount Perrin Church of God. I mean, that place was, in Sunday night, people would sneak in from all the churches all over Atlanta just to be there because mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost was there. Wow. And that was kind of how I got all involved. So in when, was, when was that? This was in 1981 when I got oh, saved. Yeah. Yeah. And then I came down here and got immediately involved. You know, he's got control of everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. He put the right people in my life. He put me where he wanted me to be, where I could get fed. Yes. And then, oh, about what, seven, eight, nine years ago, uh, Jimmy Rogers, who was the, the head of the, the local full gospel group, asked me if I'd, I'd take over for a John Up Church, who was getting a little older. And I said, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll do that. And it, I don't know how many people the Lord's touched through that ministry, how many people are going to heaven on account of it. He does. Yes. But I know that there's been thousands of kids that have gone through that two-question test brochure mm -hmm. and have said the Lord's Prayer and asked for Jesus to come into their lives. And, you know, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed when he would do something like that with oh me. Oh, my gosh. Mm. You know, I mean, you can really look through am. Scripture, and he uses the people that the least likely to do great and mighty things for exactly his kingdom. Right. And that is a perfect example of how he has been using you both in ministry for his kingdom and to save You should souls. see him now. I mean, we, we go out to Cobb <laughs> County and, uh, you know, he, he used to stutter so bad he could hardly talk. Mm -hmm. But now he's out there and he's just flowing in the spirit. I, well, I, to I told you back what happened and how I started off. I don't remember whether to go into that or not. But uh, I couldn't talk to anybody. I went, would go somewhere and my, let my wife do all the talking. Mm -hmm. Until the Holy Spirit got hold of me, and now I'm membership chairman. Wow! <laughs> yeah. Wow. He's an amazing Lord. He is. He is. So, a quick review of the dates coming up. Okay, the 13th to the 23rd, Gwinnett. Right. Okay. This weekend, we're at the the advance. Mm -hmm. uh, the 20th through the 30th, we'll be at the North Georgia State Fair in Cobb County. Mm-hmm. The 5th through the 15th of October will be both in Perry, Georgia for the National Fair and then in coming at the coming fairgrounds. You guys are busy. Busy, We're going to do 40 days in 30. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. We will be praying for you and praying for volunteers as well mm -hmm. that feel the calling as well. We Thank you, gentlemen. It has been an honor to be able to hear your testimonies, hear. hear what you're doing for Jesus. It convicts me. <laughs> oh, uh, we need hey, to be doing more. Come see us. Yes. You to work too. Yes. Yes. And your website one more time, just in case. 
Somewhere. Georgia Men's Advance, Georgia. Georgia Men's Advance, GA, GA. Yeah. dot com for dot anybody com. that is interested. And then the Godmobile is also there, the, uh, Godmobile Georgia. Godmobile Georgia has you, its you own. Can, you, yeah, you can YouTube okay. it and, and Google it. It's, it's awesome. there. It'll show you everything. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much. We really, really appreciate it. And I'm sure you guys have noticed in this time, this number... 770-300-9828 has been on your screen. That is because that is our prayer line and we have people right now that are waiting to take your call. Any questions that you have about the Lord, let's go ahead and take a look to see what's going on there. God bless you, everyone. Hi, I'm Elder Cornelius, standing here with Apostle Tina. God is moving tonight on these prayer lines. We are so excited, and it's truly an honor for each of us to be here, and we're here for you in the name of Jesus. And I just want to encourage you tonight to just continue to keep calling in, and I want Apostle Tina to encourage you as well. Apostle Tina, tell them what God is doing on the prayer line tonight. Oh, my goodness, Elder. We have people calling in from at Conyers, Ackworth, Decatur, uh, all over, wow. everywhere in Georgia. Yes. And we have people that have requests for healing people have requests for deliverance yes. finances yes. and one person prayed for about Florence Hurricane Florence wow and so I'm telling you, financial breakthroughs healings and deliverance we want to encourage you to call in right now to 770-300-9828 and get your breakthrough amen amen. amen amen and I would just want to encourage you tonight we always have this opportunity to, to reach salvation unto you salvation is the key to this walk in Christ Yes. And it's a scripture that I want to encourage you with tonight in Romans, coming from Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. And it reads, it says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, yeah. and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There it is, everyone. That's what it's all about. Confess God in your yes, life because yes. Jesus loves you. Mm -hmm. It is truly an honor and a privilege to be a part of this kingdom. Yes. We are king's kids. We are truly a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Yes. God loves you. He wants yes, you to he be. He will that no man shall perish, but all come to repentance. Mm -hmm. So I just want to encourage you tonight. Call in and let God do what he do. Back to the studio. God bless you. Bless you. Thank you, you guys. Well, I am here. You've been hearing her voice all evening. Beautiful voice, anointed voice. Heather Tag, thank you so much for being oh, here you. with us today. I wanted to give some clarifications over some songs you've written, some songs you haven't written. So the last performances that you've done have been some Bethel pieces, correct? Uh, the second song I did yes. was, the first one was an original. It was beautiful. And then later on in the program, I'll be doing one more Bethel song and then following that, uh, some more originals. Awesome. So I want to talk to you about music is something that like I resonate with so much. And so when I saw you were coming on and I looked at your website and looked at some of the lyrics that you wrote, um, you have a powerful testimony. It doesn't give all the details, but it gives enough to see that you've gone through tribulations and trials. So talk to me about how that brought you to music. Um, well, you know, for me, I became a Christian at a young age. I was mm. five when I first gave my life to the Lord. And so my story is not one from the beginning that um, is necessarily super enticing from a perspective of a plot. Uh, but yet the Lord has just really taught me a lot about the journey mm. and what it means to walk alongside him. And so for me, um, a lot of what I've had to learn is going through difficulties, going through trials, yes. and then also learning that I have to constantly lean to him and not my own understanding. And so I think as Christians, we all have a tendency to wander. Um, mm. Even once we have faith, uh, the disciples did that over and over in the Bible, no matter what they knew. And although they walked with Jesus, they still yes. wandered away. And so that's something that uh, I think keeps us humble, the realization that we can't do it on our own. And that's mm. very much what uh, the song Speechless is about, of having wandered in the walk with mm. the Lord and then coming back to that place of remembering his grace and who he is and just being speechless before him once again in awe brought back into his arms, uh, no longer orphaned, and mm, just amen. remembering that our name, our identity is in him, mm. and that he was there all along, that we were the ones often that, that wander off. 
but yes. he's waiting for us. Yes, amen. He is always waiting for us, patiently yes. waiting for us with love at the end of it, right, right? every time. So yes. what is something, I, what is the most memorable thing about music that you, when you've been able to minister to people in churches, um, studio sets, what have you, what has been the most impactful, meaningful thing for you? I think when someone comes up to me after I've led a worship set or when I've sung a song and they've just let me know how much that meant to them and not mm -hmm. because of who I am, but because it brought them somewhere before the Lord and because maybe they're wrestling with something like mental illness or maybe mm -hmm. they're wrestling with a financial issue or a disease of, of a physical nature. And so it just is really encouraging to me to know that I can be a small a small part of what God wants to do mm. in someone else's life. And yes. I think that's what means the most to me as people and knowing that they can be impacted through a song, through a lyric. Mm. Well, thank you so much. And I'm excited to welcome you back to the piano, which you play so great. <laughs> what are you going to be performing for us? Yes, uh, the next song is a Bethel song, as was the, the one before. Um, and it's just a special song to me that I like to use a lot at the church I lead worship at great. Uh, called All Hail King Jesus. All right, well, we're excited to see it. Thank you.
Every time she sings, I've never heard her until today, and I am already a fan. Heather Tag there singing All Hail King Jesus, so powerful. That is just like a song of anthem, just of praise and adoration to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not asking for anything, just like reminding him of his victory. It is amazing. Yeah. Love it. Uh, one thing I'd like to cover, <laughs> something is new tonight, and that is Courtney. <laughs> I yes yes I've it's been an honor to be here as a guest co-host alongside of you yeah. Marcus it's been fun yes I'm Atlanta raised born and born and raised but I traveled around a good bit in my time I've been in broadcasting for the past five and a half six years and but you've come home but I've come home oh, that's I've come awesome. home and it's and it's great to be home and uh, serving the Lord you know just step by step day by day figuring out what that looks like I'm excited welcome thank We're glad you glad to have you back thank you so much thank you we well, well we got 30 more minutes <laughs> of exciting entertainment. You don't want to go anywhere. You got Heather Tag coming right back and another interview. Don't miss it. to WATC's Atlanta Live. My name is Courtney Curtis. I'm one of your hosts this evening. And I'm Marcus Graham. Yes. Also one of the hosts. Tag teaming. Yes, indeed. Yes. It has been a powerful night. If you guys have, are just joining us, we have been able to listen to a lot of testimonies where people from the corporate world mm -hmm. are now using those skills in order to magnify the kingdom. And we've been listening to an artist that now I need to go buy her single because I love her voice. It's, it's incredible. So you're yeah. going to talk a little bit more about that, too. Definitely. Uh, well, let me tee up the song that we have uh, coming up in just a few moments. Heather Tagg will be singing Speechless. And this is from her single that just got released a few months ago, so mm -hmm. you can go on her website, I think it's heathertag.com, and check that out. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and one and only Heather Tag singing Speechless. Of night in the darkest 
time I ran from you I strayed so far Not trusting who you are When all along I needed you Speechless No words can describe Such goodness How you gave up your life Breathless found in you In your presence I made new Breathe Take all fear and doubt Help me trust the hand Thou let me out You called me home And orphan made your own I am overwhelmed By your endless love Speechless No words can describe Such goodness How you gave up your life Heather Tag performing Speechless. Thank you so much. That is off of her single if you guys want to check that out. I have, we have with us a very special guest. Um, I've been kind of looking through her book this past week. It's been a little bit of a nightcap for me. Her name is Jo Nottam and her story is quite interesting. You went from being side by side with somebody in the royal family, working for somebody in the royal family. Then you turned pastor's wife and pastor. Then you turned writer. And so right now in your life, how, how have you come from one working for Prince Charles? Yes, I'm saying that correctly. The Prince Charles, the second to the throne or next in line to the throne. How did that work for you in the beginning? Well, in the beginning, the, the whole transition is actually part of my story. But I always knew that the call of God was on my life. Mm. And so from a young age, I sensed that God had a great purpose for my life. Um, I backslid mm. in my university years,
But when I rededicated my life to the Lord, I mean, I, I, I just knew that eventually I was going to be in ministry in some capacity or mm. other. Um, but after Bible college went, and that was when I first started working for the Prince's Trust. And, and that is his charity, one of his largest. That is his biggest, most prestigious charity. Wow. And I was promoted and promoted and promoted, and just the favor of God was mm. really surrounding me in that place. And my job there was by royal appointment, and I sat in Prince Charles's sitting room at times and presented to him. And so it was a huge privilege and mm. very exciting, involved in events at Buckingham Palace, at okay. St. James's Palace, with the Prime Minister, with celebrities. <laughs> and I say all that really to say this, it's nothing. What it appears to be. Compared to working for the King of Amen. Kings. Mm -hmm. I love that. You know, all that royalty and mm. all those celebrities. Yes. But oh my goodness, the privilege of serving Jesus. I love that. Amen. When was that change for you? When did it come down to your life saying, I am taking a hard right turn and selling out and giving everything to the Lord? How did that work? When did that happen? Well, I think there's, there's, a, there's a practical answer and there's a spiritual answer. So I'm going mm. to tell you both. We would love to hear both. So the practical answer was that I was offered the opportunity to work for my church alongside my husband. He'd been in full-time ministry now for a while, and we were both involved in leading and pastoring, and then the opportunity came for me to join him. And mm. my salary went down to a less than a fifth, wow. one-fifth of what I was earning. In fact, I was earning less than my annual bonus. Wow. But... On this truth, I was just eager to make the move because to me it was just the future was opening up. It was mm. the rest of my life and I was excited and I knew God was going to take care of us. Yes. We, we were always, we, you know, we've always tithed, we've always given, we've always made sure that God came first and so we knew that God would continue to provide. Mm. So that's the spiritual answer or the practical answer, I should Beautiful say. Beautiful answer. But there was a moment, a really powerful moment. And like I said, I was already in leadership, pastoring with my husband and doing that as well as I was, after I left the Prince's Trust, I was hired to be um, a vice president at the world's biggest PR company. Mm. And, you know, it was an amazing privilege. But I was doing that as well as pastoring and leading and there was one particular Friday and my husband and I were meeting together with about 20 or 30 other couples who were in ministry and it was lunchtime and I was sitting opposite an incredibly prophetic woman and she looked across the table at me at lunchtime and she suddenly said out the blue the problem with you Joe is it's all about position Mm. Mm. And I remember thinking, oh. ouch. Yes, that's tough to hear. <laughs> because I loved God with all my heart. Mm. I really, really loved him. But the trouble was there was some truth in what she was saying. And she didn't stop there, <laughs> as though that wasn't <laughs> bad enough. <laughs> she continued. And she said, the honest truth is you have never faced some of the issues and rejection from your childhood. Hmm. And at that point, I did respond. Because I remember saying, well, you know what? My job in my family, you know, was holding things together. We were fine. I'm sorted now. I've been healed. I don't know what you're on about. And then she carried on again. Oh <laughs> and this time she said, it's buried so deep you've never faced it. Hmm. And suddenly... The Holy Spirit, you know, one of his names is the Spirit of Truth. Mm. And he broke into my heart. And sitting at lunch, surrounded by pastors, by the way, whose opinions meant far too much to me. Mm. And in this restaurant, filled with probably a hundred other people just eating their lunch, I suddenly broke down and wept. Mm. As I faced 
the truth. You know, you've got to remember, by this point, I'd been in leadership and pastoring for 10 years. Mm. Mm. But for the first time in my life, I faced the real truth. Wow. And my real truth was this, that if you were to take away my ministry, if you were to take away all my job titles, which, by the way, were really impressive and great at dinner parties, mm. Mm. if you were to take away my, my position as being a wife, because that meant someone really loved me, or being a mother, just Joe, I realized in that moment, I don't believe that I'm enough. Mm, wow. I feel like wow. I'm nothing. And I wept mm. and I sobbed for about 20 minutes mm. as God started me on a brand new journey. And it was that moment when not only did I realize, oh my goodness, this woman, you know, I thought I was a Christian success. I was winning people to Jesus. I was bringing healing. I was seeing my church grow. You know, I could tell people I'm a pastor, but the truth was I was a complete mess. Mm. And about maybe a month later, I mean, that was the beginning of a major journey. And about a month, maybe two months later, my husband and I were leading a retreat and we were taking all our leaders, about 60 or 70 of our church, of our leaders in our church, away. And he said to me, you do the opening session. And I just started to share what God was doing in me. Mm. I used scripture, showed from scripture about the fact that the heart is deceitful above all things. Mm. Yes. In other words, your heart lies to you and tells you you're sorted, mm. when really on the inside you're deriving all your sense of validity from everything you do. Mm. So I shared, and literally, every single one of our leaders, both those who'd gone through abuse, rape, raised in terrible situations, but also those who'd been raised in really lovely Christian homes. I look across, and now the entire room was weeping. Mm. Every one of our leaders was on their knees, as the Holy Spirit was ministering into the depths of each one's hearts. And our whole church leadership and then our whole church went on this new journey of just, you know what, God, search my heart. You know, this is the thing the Bible says, that the heart's deceitful. And it says, who could know his own heart? Mm. But then the next verse is, I, the Lord, search. Yes. But the extraordinary thing about that is even God has to search our hearts mm. to discover what's inside. Uh. Mm. So it was then that I really discovered the beginnings, I rather really, of me discovering my purpose here on planet Earth, mm. which is to help God's people go on a journey of allowing him to pull out pain, to pull out insecurity, mm to really discover the truth about that, who they are, so that all the, the sadness that's beneath the surface, all the worries about what everyone else thinks can be dealt with, mm. so that we can start to carry the love of God mm. wherever we go. And really, that's what this book is about. <laughs> I was wow. about yeah. to say, my goodness. That's I... all in there. And much, much more. <laughs> Let me just take a moment to say, wow, I was not expecting that. That ministered to me so much. We live in a world right now where we are seeking so much instant gratification and validation from so many people. Mm. And so for you to be so vulnerable to say, like, it's okay to be broken in this way. And yes, so many of us do strive in order to have other people validate who we are, but we need to be honest with that. And I think your book, I would love for you to share a little bit about that because yeah. I think it does break down a lot of those walls or at least give us the revelations maybe to dwell upon yeah. so you know the reason I wrote this book I believe that many of us take more car more care of our cars than we do our hearts mm. we take our cars for regular services mm -hmm. we make sure that our vehicles are fit for the road but what do we do to make sure that our hearts are fit. And let me, let me tell you why it's important. Proverbs chapter four and verse 23 says that your heart 
determines the course of your life. Mm. It's our hearts that determine whether or not we're ready for promotion. Mm. So many times, you know, we've been given promises and we think we're waiting on God, but he's waiting on us. This book will take every single reader on a journey. The Holy Spirit will shine his light mm. into the depths of each one's heart and reveal the secret sadnesses mm. that we didn't even realize were still holding us back. You know, the people who were affected most by the insecurities, the rejections, the issues on the earth are the people who know us the best. Hmm. And the more healed we get. I've got so many examples in this book of men and women whose lives have been transformed as all they've done is surrendered. Hmm. And they've said, Holy Spirit, this is the thing. Holy Spirit, I want to become the best version of me. I want you to do a work so deep on the inside of me that I can carry your love, your kindness, your glory. And there are chapters in here. There's a chapter about conditional love. I hear that. It's a phrase I, well, it's a phrase I'd never heard before. Mm -hmm. I remember saying to God, look, I knew my parents loved me. Yes, we had a really pretty dysfunctional family. Who doesn't? You know, so many people do. <laughs> Isn't it true? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, dysfunctional family. But I always knew that they loved me. Mm -hmm. So I said to God, why was I so riddled with rejection and full of insecurities? Mm. And he said, conditional love. Let me explain it. Growing up, we're celebrated when we succeed. Mm. We oh, yeah. receive love and affirmation from our mum and dad when we have done well in sports or when things have gone really good. But when life is just continuing, there's a vacuum. Mm -hmm. mm. It's amazing how much conditional love, that sense of I've only really of any value when I'm achieving, it, oh. it hurts people and we yes. end up seeking the job titles. Job titles were everything mm -hmm. to me. Yes. Actually, the money never really meant much to me as long as I had a good job, ti job title. Mm. But you see, it was rooted in feeling that my only value came from when I did something good. Mm. So we have a whole chapter on that. I love it. We've got a chapter on what I call the armor of the enemy. I noticed that, very interesting. Yeah, you see, the devil counterfeits everything God does. Mm -hmm. Fear is the counterfeit of faith. Faith is believing in God's word. Fear is when we believe what the enemy says. And the enemy's always counterfeiting what God does. Well, he has also counterfeited the full armor of God. So instead of the shield of faith with which we extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy, Satan wants us to hold up the shield of denial. Mm where when the word of truth comes that could bring correction, or could even the word of truth that says, you know what, Joe, position is everything to you. That mm. was the word of truth. Denial wanted to go, what do you want about? I love God. Mm -hmm. And so we hold up that shield of denial mm. to withstand the truth, because the truth hurts sometimes. Yeah. Another example, the sword of the spirit that cuts through everything, brings truth into the depth of our innermost being. What's the enemy's equivalent? Wounding words that pierce us. The Bible says there is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword. Mm -hmm. And so many of us, there's things that have been said that just cut us on the inside. Mm. Uh, and you know what? We end up saying, oh, well, I'm just supposed to, get on with life anyway, mm. but we're carrying the hurts. Mm. And so we end up avoiding certain situations. We end up in a situation where rather than the spirit of God leading us, we end up being led by pain, mm -hmm. by trying to avoid it or just by trying to, you know, put on a show. Yes. So there are so many revelations in this book yes. that are gonna help every single reader to go on a journey and allow 
God to do a life-changing work mm -hmm. on the inside. Joe, yeah, so powerful. And something that I do love, thank you for sharing that. I was not expecting everything that you said, and I'm just like, I receive it right now, girl. I receive it. But something that I did love, for people that we talk about the heart, a lot of men will kind of say, fruit, fruit, that's woman's territory. No, no, no. So why is it that this book also, when we talk about the heart's condition, it's important for any gender to really search the heart. Why should we be doing that? Well, last time I checked, the Bible is written to men and women. Yes. <laughs> And the Bible says to men, guard your heart, for it determines the course of your life. Yes. And that word guard is actually tend to, mm. protect. Let me tell you, healed men can be the best husbands in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember watching my husband go on a healing journey. And, you know, my husband used to, and, and really he represents many, but he used to struggle in the area of anger. Mm. And he's an amazing guy, always has been. But every now and then, there would just be like an outburst. And we would be the only ones who would see it at home. Of course, it's only at right, home, isn't right, it? Yeah. And the more he allowed God to reach into the depths of his heart and deal with hidden trauma, then the more peace that evaded. You know, that one of my favorite stories in this book about a man was about a businessman and pastor from Northern Florida, amazing guy. And he came along to one of my two day conferences and his thing was, well, I hardly ever feel anything. Not very emotional, don't feel, but on the other hand, I get angry. Mm -hmm. I'll be calm, 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 and then suddenly a little outburst. Mm -hmm. And in one of these sessions when I was ministering, God shone his light into this man's heart. You see, what the Holy Spirit will do is he will take us back to the very memory often that we've forgotten. Or we may remember it, but think it wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit took this man back to when he was just a little boy and when he'd been beaten by his mother. And in that moment, something on the inside of that man shut down. Mm -hmm. And God ministered to this 62 year old man who fell to his knees and wept and then laughed as well mm. because God healed his heart in the most profound way. Now that's great but what I love is the outcome. His wife who's also in ministry with him, his children who are also in ministry said we got a new father. We, I got a new husband. Mm. You see, men need this sometimes I think more than women. Let me tell Probably. you why. Yeah. Let me tell you, I, I love ministering to men. In fact, the, the, the gentleman who drove me here this evening, mm. his life was completely transformed when God took him on a healing journey. Mm. He went from somebody who was constantly striving to succeed to a man who suddenly realized, oh my goodness, I'm enough in Christ. Mm. But his wife was telling me that not only was he completely healed and restored, but their marriage was transformed and mm. their family was. Yeah. You see, when, when a man is restored, the marriage is, the home is, the community is. So, I mean, we could talk to you all night. We really could. But we're running out of time. I want to thank you for your investment into the kingdom, your investment into people with this book. You can find this book. Where can yes, absolutely. It? My website on Amazon. Okay. You can buy this online. You can... Great. Joe Norton.com. Thank you so much, Joe. And we have been looking at some of the prayer requests that have been coming into the line. I think we have it at the bottom of the screen, that number yet, the 770-390-828. And right now we're just seeing people needing financial breakthrough with their children, with their marriage, with family peace, mm -hmm. protection. And so we have these right now. We have, I think all of them, I don't know, I would say roughly maybe 50 or more of them. And they're going to be prayed over this week by our prayer team and those at the station and we just want to thank you so much for allowing us into your homes this evening uh, we have one more song for you heather tags morning light <laughs> Talk.
Shiver. 